They say seeing is believing, and I guarantee you've never seen anything like this. The story of a woman called Anita Riskin, who's convinced there's such a thing as life after death, quite literally. She's one of hundreds of people, including Australians, who believe in cryonics. That's the process where doctors freeze human bodies, preserve them so that sometime in the future they can be resuscitated, brought back to life. Now, as Anita Riskin sets out on her amazing journey, for the first time you'll see how it's actually done, at times quite graphically. And you'll meet a famous Australian who plans to follow her into the unknown. It's just hours after her death and Anita Riskin is ready for future resurrection. Her body frozen in the hope that one day she'll wake to live again. Anita's been promised immortality. She's been cryonically preserved in liquid nitrogen and she's left us a unique record of her dream to one day return. For the first time, a film crew records this extraordinary journey before and after Anita's death. People say to me, I have a certain life and I, I'm going to live it and be done with it, which like bogs my mind that people have that attitude. I, I, would, I want to live forever and ever. I love life. Just love it. It's a highly controversial procedure. Most scientists doubt it will ever be possible to bring Anita back. But as cancer saps her strength in the months before her death, Anita Riskin clings to the hope of life after life. I'm dying. I have too many tumours to count in my brain. I have too many tumours to count in my lung. I have tumours in my lymph node, in my chest. I have tumours in my leg and my liver. I'm, I'm going. I don't know how much longer, but it's there. At home in California, Anita's husband, Michael, supports her decision. He plans to be preserved too, so they can be reunited in decades or even hundreds of years, when they hope science will make that possible. It would be a completely different experience if we didn't have cryonics as an option at the end of this particular um, road. And uh, none of this makes me happy but let me say that it makes me less unhappy. <laughs> they call it cryonic reanimation. It's a possibility that's existed in science fiction for years. Two American corporations now claim to offer it as a reality. 147 people have been frozen so far. A thousand more have signed up most committing their life insurance to cover the cost. Anita Riskin chose to be preserved by a company called Alcor in Arizona. Science fiction is becoming science fact on a daily basis. Alcor's chief operating officer is Tanya Jones. Like any corporate saleswoman, she's upbeat about her product. We do encourage our patients to come visit, our members to come visit uh, before they sign up, have a tour of the facility. Uh, we show them the patient care bay, the operating room. We explain the procedures and answer any questions that they have. They are placed in here, head up where this is the top of the head. That would be the neck. Uh, these are clamped into the forehead. And as everywhere in American business, there are options. Some choose to have their entire body frozen for $160,000. Or, bizarrely, you can just have your head preserved at the cut rate of $80,000. They think, hmm, it's time to start fresh. Tanya Jones okay, says clients who choose the head-only option are hoping that when they're brought back to life, science will give them new bodies. You don't want to bring someone 99 and a half years old back in a 99 and a half year old body. Well, this is a way of me coming back in 100 years from now with a whole new routine that nobody's heard before. I can do all the gags again, and it's all brand new. New jokes. <laughs> oh, yeah. You might say only in America, but dozens of Australians, too, have signed up to be frozen after death. Among them, comedian Ugly Dave Gray. His wife, Valerie, is dead against it, but for him, it's no joke. 
Imagine what it's going to be like a hundred years from today. Now, Val wouldn't agree with that. No, because I believe the world is such a dreadful place at the moment. Imagine what it's going to be like in another hundred years, if there is still a world. But you'll make sure his wishes are followed. Oh, Good definitely, time. yes. Because, I mean, you've got to respect your partner's decision, wishes, wishes and yeah. what, he want, what he wants to do. And in that way, will it be hard for you, Val? In... Oh, it'll be awful. It, you know, it would be awful if, if, uh, if Dave goes first. And it'll be awful for, the, for our children, too. As Anita Riskin's final days approach, she knows her husband Michael is with her to her final breath and beyond. Other people might possibly uh, criticize Anita in the sense of she's running away from death, she doesn't want to face a kind of a normal process, something that happens to everybody. There's a certain kind of biological lifespan that we've been given. And in fact, I think both Anita and I are facing the prospect of death head on, fully acknowledging it, fully understanding that this is going to happen. So really, rather than running away from it, I think we're running towards it with all the vigor and intelligence and organization we can possibly muster. As her pain worsens, Anita okay, begins so to you. long for the end. I love you, and I wish this was all over. I hate this. Jim, being sick, dying. With her cancer now in its final stages, she makes the most of the remaining weeks, spending a final weekend away with husband Michael. So, Anita. Oh, I don't have anything on. It doesn't matter. My beautiful hair. What's the first thing you want to eat? When I come back? After 50 years of being frozen. Gosh darn. What is the first thing? Can I have a few things? Yeah. Meatballs and spaghetti. Uh, meatballs and spaghetti, OK. At 4.30 p.m. on the 2nd of February, Anita Riskin breathes her last, for now. People say that the last thing that goes is your uh, hearing. So we made sure that we were talking to her and telling her that we loved her and that we'd see her, leaving good thoughts in her uh, memory. And she took her last breath. And... Um, she was pronounced legally dead. Of course, from our position, it's not, cl it's not clinically dead, but it's legally. Anita has driven the 600 kilometers to Alcor. She's taken straight into the operating theater for the cryonic procedure. And because she's recorded her thoughts, we know exactly what Anita would think of all this. It's definitely um, keeps me calm to know that if someday, sometime, I might be able to come back and be cured because the most important thing in my life is living. Tanya Jones oversees a team of eight. Two are trained surgeons, but the others have no medical qualifications. Cut back a little bit more. The chest cavity is open and plastic tubes sewn into the heart to bring in the cryopreservation fluid. OK, the circuit is connected. Toxic chemicals pump through Anita's blood vessels, right, replacing 60% of the water in her body. Opening the venous, got return. But this is where conventional science casts serious doubt on the whole process. When the cryonic fluids are frozen to below minus 120 degrees, they become like glass. Ice crystals form destroying the body's cells. Most experts believe it will never be possible to reverse such damage. To uh, give people a false sense of security and hope that they will be reanimated is something I think borders on science fiction. Arthur Rowe is a world leader in microbiology. I do think that they are being duped, they are being conned, they are sold a bill of goods that involves a rather substantial amount of money to keep these individuals in perpetuity. This is not so, and I think as such, uh, they are uh, like salesmen trying to sell snake oil to people uh, and just make money out of it. 
But the cryonics companies say science will overcome the catastrophic damage caused in the freezing process. If I tap the kidney, it has that sort of tinny sound of tapping on glass. Already, scientists have shown that frozen rabbit kidneys, like this one, can be revived. American research scientist Gregory Fay froze a rabbit kidney, then defrosted it, and successfully re-implanted it in the living animal. Much to our amazement, it actually did survive. So we actually have finally accomplished this goal that I've been pursuing since 1972 of being able to vitrify a kidney, warm it back up again, transplant it, and have the animal maintain clinical normalcy indefinitely afterwards. Of course, restoring a frozen kidney to an animal in a lab is a long way from bringing back to life a human being. No one's been able to capture the vast complexity of thoughts, memory and personality that makes us what we are. The critics say that when the cryonics companies freeze the human brain, essentially they're destroying the very thing they're trying to save. Cryobiology is not simply putting something in a freezer and walking away. Uh, such as uh, frozen meat or frozen vegetables. Uh, cryobiology is much more involved. Okay, you see here the patchiness, the orange color in the skin. Basically, this is a sign that the tissue is taking up the cryoprotectant and little white patches where it's not receiving it very well. Back at Alcor's laboratory, the intensive process of preserving Anita's body continues. Can you move the light for him, please? The hope is that the brain will shrink fairly significantly as a lot of the water is pulled out of the tissue. Uh, this helps in the vitrification protocol to prevent the formation of ice crystals later. We're going to insert temperature probes so we can monitor the temperature of the brain directly. The Alcor staff claim they're taking special care to monitor Anita's brain. And we're going to introduce a couple of probes that we call crack phones. These are basically acoustic probes that listen for fracturing events. But the chemicals and freezing will almost certainly destroy her brain tissue. And with it, everything that made Anita the unique individual her family loved. It makes me nervous about how my brain will uh, reanimate and come back. And um, I'm hoping that we come back as a perfect world that we've learned to give each other common hope and help. Over the next couple of weeks, Anita's body temperature is gradually lowered to minus 196 degrees Celsius. Anita is moved into a stainless steel pod with several others. Her husband, Michael, is able to visit just as he would a cemetery. I went over to the tank, gave the tank a hug, and I kind of knew which side of the tank she was in. And I kind of whispered to her a little bit and told her that I loved her and that I would be seeing her. I definitely think that cryonics uh, gives, especially my husband and my daughter and my son and my grandchildren, something to hold on to that Grammy's not exactly gone. She's just, I call it the freezer factory that uh, I'm in. What bothers me is that uh, uh, many of these cryonics people give uh, bereaving uh, parents or, or spouses uh, false hope of security. And I think this is uh, taking advantage of somebody's state of bereavement. If someone wants to say it's wacko, that's their prerogative. Uh, I'm certainly not going to argue with them. I'm just going to keep working on it until we have a real answer. Won't it be lonely if you come back and Val's not here? She is such a love, and I think the world of her. And I wish she'd do it with me, but she, I can't talk her into it. No. But it'd be lovely if we came back together, right. you know, and, and, and go on skating with the stars. <laughs> <laughs> I think not. <laughs> The fact is, for now, it's just not possible to bring a human back from the dead. But despite all the evidence, people like Michael Riskin put their faith in this dubious science. And he believes one day he'll be reunited with his wife. In an ideal world, 
we would both be revived um, simultaneously with our memories and identities completely and be intact. And if I had to picture a perfect scenario, we would uh, be sitting in a comfortable chair with our arms around each other and saying hello again. I definitely hope that when Cryonics comes up with a cure that they will bring me back so I can go on and have a wonderful, happy life, which I enjoy very much. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.